if all of us really listen to what the Lord spoke today, He really is a counselor. I believe He's been a marriage counselor today, a child psychologist, a spiritual advisor, all put in one, in one hour. Only the Lord can really do that. Who are you sleeping with? I believe that's what the Lord really said. Jacob was in love with Rachel. But he was sleeping with Leah. And in the darkness of his soulish understanding, he did not know. Well, who's Leah? When he woke up the next day, he asked Laban, how can you do this? How can you give me Leah when I'm really in love with Rachel? He said, well, in our country, in our culture, in our tradition, you cannot marry the firstborn, the first fruit. You cannot marry the younger until you marry the first fruit. Jacob was in love with Rachel. That's his heartbeat. But he married tradition. He married culture. He was in love with the Lord, like you are, but you end up marrying the church with all of her religious bag and all of her tradition. This is in Genesis 29. In Genesis 28 is where he talked about Jacob encountering the Lord. He slept, he had a dream, and he saw the Lord. The heavens were open, and the angels of the Lord ascending and descending. Jacob, in all of his trickery and all of his lying and deception, was really a spiritual man. But like all of us, he had an inferiority complex. Because the Bible says, when the children were born, that Isaac loved Esau. But Jacob, Rebecca loved Jacob. What is the Bible really not saying? That Isaac did not reach out to his son Jacob with the love that he should have. Just like he talked about. His father wasn't there to say, Jacob, I love you. I'm proud of you. Uh, you are the apple of my eye. That's what, what's what a father and mother really is supposed to do. To nurture that child. Because your impression of your earthly father is really your, act, your, your gate into your impression of your heavenly father. What you think of your father on earth really can be a hindrance or can be a catalyst to your relationship with the Lord. If you wrestle all of your life with how your mom and dad treated you, you're going to carry that wrestling with the Lord. Jacob saw the Lord, and then he poured the oil when he woke up upon the rock. He anointed the rock. He said, surely this is the house of the Lord, Bethel. Amazingly, this is in Haran in Syria. In Genesis chapter 12, when the Lord, when Abraham encountered the Lord, he said, this is Bethel, between Bethel and Ai. So Bethel is in Israel. Bethel is also in Haran. How many Bethels are there in the Bible? Bethel is where you encounter God. It's the house of the Lord. And we have become the temple of God. Jacob loved the Lord. He says, this is the house of the Lord. He was a spiritual man. Genesis 28. Genesis 29, he meets Rachel. He falls in love with her. Just like you really love the Lord, you had an encounter with Him. Your spirit was open, and you meet Rachel. Instead of marrying the Lord, you marry the church. And you continue in her tradition. You labor for seven years and seven more years, waiting for your promotion, waiting to be... It's dead. It's dead as a... As a, as a it's dead. There's no life in it. Incredibly enough, a lot of us really love the Lord and really seek Him, but we fell in love with the church, her history, her tradition. I'm not picking up on anybody, any conversation that's been said. But how many of us have really sought after a conference, after an anointing? How many have really sought the Lord, We're really seeking the Lord? Jacob sees the Lord and a ladder. Amazingly, the Lord picks up on that in John chapter 1. And verse 21, when he meets Nathanael of Philip, the both disciples of John the Baptist, they follow the Lord. I want you to hear this by the Spirit. He's talking to Nathanael. Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. This is exactly what, what uh, uh, Peter said in Matthew 16. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the king of Israel. He recognized the Christ. Look what the Lord says. This is, this is for all of us today. 
Hear by the Spirit. I pray you just remember this by the Spirit. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe you will, you will see greater things? And he said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, Here therefore you shall see heaven open, the heavens open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Nathaniel was intrigued by the gift of knowledge, by Pentecost, if you will. Jesus gave him a word of knowledge. He said, before he even approached me, I saw you under the fig tree. What's the fig tree? Remember, Adam and Eve hid themselves, their nakedness with a fig tree? That takes you back to the garden. He said, before you even approached, I saw you under the fig tree. He was given a word of knowledge. How many have you received the word of knowledge in the church? How many have you got after Pentecost? How many have got after the tradition of the church? But look what Christ is saying. Don't fall short because the heavens are open, you, open to you to see the Lord just like they were open to uh, Jacob in Genesis chapter 28. He said, you're intrigued by Pentecost, by the gifts, by the tradition of men. And he said, but you really are supposed to see the Son of God ascending and descending. That's the heart of God. Are you still seeking after Rachel with all of your heart and sleeping with Leah? Have you come out of the church, but has the church come out of you? The Lord really wants to do micro neurosurgery on you today, if you really listen by the Spirit. He wants you to hone in on Him, so nothing of the lack of the love of your mom or dad can distract you. And nothing of the affection for the church can keep you locked up in tradition. A scripture in verse in Genesis in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the dunamis of his Christ. For the accuser who accused him day and night before the throne of God is cast out. They overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and the love in their suke, their soulish life unto death. What is he saying? When does the kingdom of God really come into your life? Now we associate Pentecost with dunamis, the dunamis of the Holy Spirit, right? That's the power to do miracles. Is that not right? There are four or five words in, in Greek for power. One of them is dunamis. But I really like the word kratos, that's dominion. To whomever believe on him as the Son of God, John chapter 1, he gave them exousia, to, dominion, to become the sons of God. What he's talking about in Revelation 12 and 9 says, Now has come the dunamis of his Christ. What is the purpose of the dunamis? So you'll do miracles? No. Now has come salvation and strength, the kingdom of our God, and the dunamis, the power of his Christ. Why? So the accuser in your own mind can be brought down. And you overcome him in your life by the blood of the Lamb. You go to Calvary. You've already been to Calvary. By the word of your testimony, you really have lived with us for the Lord, and not loving your soul, you will die to your suke life. Who are you sleeping with in the spirit of your mind? You love the Lord, are you still sleeping with the church of Pentecost? I, I want to labor in this because, because I, I want to bring down that stronghold in your mind is called the church life and her aspirations because they go after signs and wonders. What's the next thing happening? What's the next outbreak? And I'll be honest with you, you can be deluded. And you seek after false gold. When the real thing is right here. He is the lover of your soul and He is really after you today. He's seeking after you. Would you really follow Him? Pursue Him. Let Him draw you unto you. And He will be your counselor. He'll heal you from affliction. He'll heal you from a failed marriage from a, a rejection of your mom or your dad, whatever you feel about yourself that is not right, you're the apple of His eye. He sees you perfected in the image of His Son. Pursue after the Lord. Adultery is thinking of somebody who's not your wife or your husband. The Lord said, are you sleeping with the church and loving me at the same time? That's adultery. Paul says the same thing. Flee fornication. Who are you sleeping with? He really was conception as, as, as death so emphasized it. He wants to bring the Christ in you. Yeah. And that's your deliverance. Now has come salvation and strength. And the kingdom of our God and the dunamis of His Christ. For the accuser in your own mind, your imagination, what you think the Lord really is, is cast down. And I pray today you'll overcome Him and put your soulish life to death. Amen. Amen. Amen.